The research teams in the Kiana system require your assistance. They have been running thousands of temporal incursion simulations of how to use the Krenim weapon. But I need an officer with field experience to evaluate the project in its feasibility. You will participate in a focus test of the most promising options. A blade cuts both ways. We must be sure that what this weapon can do to the Iconians does not cause greater harm to us. Welcome. We have been working with the Krenim to build both this facility and a weapon similar to the one developed by Anorax in the 22nd century. Captain Nog is running point for the Alliance, but teams from all across the Alpha and Beta Quadrants are involved with the research. It's fascinating work, but there's a lot to do yet. Captain Nog might be able to explain more. He's waiting for you. It's good to see you too. For a few weeks, I was helping the Alliance research new ways to deactivate Iconian gateways. We were making progress, but it wasn't fast enough to stop the advance of the Heralds. After Captain Nog made contact with the Krenim, I asked to transfer here. Now I'm working with Interdimensional Resonance Harmonics to help recreate Anorax's work. Yes, yes I have. I guess the Solene aren't visiting me at night anymore. Or maybe it's the 14-hour days trying to wrap my brain around complex temporal equations that are wearing me out. Either way, my sleep is greatly improved. Thank you for asking. Welcome. We have been working with the Krenim to Captain Nog... I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. We've managed to make a prototype of the Krenim weapon in Anorax's records, but we have not attempted to use it yet. Time isn't something you mess around with, so we have been conducting simulations here of possible incursions, as well as developing new ways to protect and store data on various timelines. Oh, that the Iconians can't time travel because it unravels their minds. She was being dramatic, but she was essentially correct. When most humanoids time travel, they retain the memories of their timeline of origin. So you realize when things have changed. Iconians are at least partially energy beings. We saw that when Matara was able to use her own power to open gateways. And their brain structure is very different from other humanoids. As far as we understand, if an Iconian traveled back in time, their mind and memories would reshape to fit that time. So they would retain no memories of the present. They don't use time travel because it would literally be taking a step backwards. I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. We've managed to make a prototype of the Krenim weapon in Anorax's records, but we have not attempted to use it yet. Time isn't something you mess around with, so we have been con When we talk about time alteration, we're specifically referring to the Krenim weapon's ability to remove something from time, anything, from a single molecule to an entire civilization. It's as if the target of the weapon never existed at all, correct? The changes ripple out from the incursion point and result in a new reality where the target no longer exists. This does mean that the ship must be able to fire on a target. The details are a bit more complex, of course, but that's the main difference from conventional time travel. Temporal agents from all three factions are watching everything we do carefully. That's one of the reasons we're running holodeck simulations first. Between you and me, I'm glad they're here. The Krenim are a little too eager to use the weapon. Time manipulation is a very delicate operation under the best of circumstances. We can't just start shooting things out of existence and hoping it all works out for the best. I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. That was the first simulation we tried. The results were fairly catastrophic. Without the Iconians, the first development of warp technology by other cultures in the Alpha Quadrant is severely delayed by about 50,000 years. Removing the Iconians would change everything we know. Let me put it this way. In one version, the Daywans eventually rise to power and conquer most of the Beta Quadrant. They are forced back by the Vulcans, who never embrace logic, and later enslave much of what is now Federation and Klingon space. I'm not done yet. The Herc never developed warp technology at all, 
so they never invade Kronos and unite the Klingons as a warrior culture. When the Vulcan Star Empire finds the Klingons in the 22nd century, they were mostly farmers who had made some advances in epic poetry. By the present day in this simulation, the Vulcan Star Empire is locked in a to-the-death struggle with the Dominion. I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. We Once we make an incursion, anything not protected by a temporal shield will conform to the new timeline. That includes all of us once this mission is over. We won't remember the Iconians, the war, or anything that changes in the new timeline. Clouda has been leading the work to create a shielded computer core to hold all the data we currently have. A time capsule, I guess you'd call it. Correct. This isn't the sort of sacrifice we'd expect any personnel involved in the incursion to make. So we built a computer to retain the information for us. We'll know what happened before, even though it essentially will have happened to someone else. I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. We've tried a different number of scenarios, but only in the holodeck. Direct action against the Iconians is proving to be problematic because so much time has passed since they were first a great power. Incursions that far back in time must be carefully planned, or the fallout of even minor changes can ripple across reality. We have, however, seen some progress in trying to delay their arrival. Actually, it would be closer to a 700-year delay if our calculations are correct. The Iconians have had 200,000 years to build their fleets, but we're catching up to them. We've already seen what the 29th century technology can do. Imagine what we'll have in the 32nd century. Exactly. The other potential solution is to cut into their current power base. What if the Iconians never allied with the Alachi or the Solene? We wouldn't be facing the trouble we do now. The three most promising incursions each follow one of these tactics. My teams have been running simulations and refining their targets, but I'd like you to assist them using a special quantum recursive algorithm. Our simulators can run the outcome of a possible incursion on the holodeck. Interacting with that simulation will give us more data than just crunching the numbers. We need to really interact with it to see what reality would look like. And for that, I need someone like you with field experience. Hello. Please allow me to explain what we're doing here. We've determined that if we remove a specific series of stars from the Beta Quadrant in the distant past, a rogue planet will enter the Iconia system and cause massive geological damage at about the same time the planet was bombarded by the Iconian's enemies. The technological buildup of the orbital bombardment that destroyed the Iconian civilization will still happen, but the Iconians themselves will have to deal with a natural disaster, not a war. Maybe the survivors of a natural disaster, if there are any, won't be so vengeful, and none of the stars we will remove have planets with the possibility of developing life. The overall effect on the galaxy is minimal. It's a painful path, but it could be the one that leads to peace. The number of stars we will have to remove is a concern, which is why we're trying this in a simulation first. But as Captain Nog said, these simulations aren't perfect. So we have devised a holodeck program that will expand and extrapolate on possible effects of the temporal incursion. It's the best option we have available to us. The holodeck's algorithms have been updated to change and adapt to the data created by the simulated timeline alteration. This is not your average hollow novel. Once we run the program, you'll be able to interact with our best approximation of the new timeline. Interaction with the holodeck components will allow the program to generate a more in-depth solution and give us a better idea of what to expect. We have set this simulation on a Federation starship patrolling the Sol system, and you are the captain. If all goes as planned, we expect that almost everything in the system should be close to current reality. years old. That's only because I spent 90 years caught in a temporal distortion in the Typhon Expanse, serving as an ensign under Captain Morgan Bateson, the USS Bozeman. Much of the crew of the Bozeman found it difficult to integrate back into Starfleet. So much had changed. The Temporal Intelligence Agency took in many of my shipmates, due to our first-hand knowledge of events that occurred in the past. 
So, that's where I ended up. Hello. Anything involving temporal mechanics is complicated, but the short answer is yes. I am watching these simulations very closely, as are my counterparts from the Republic and the Klingon Empire. Even small changes to time can have large and lasting effects. On Earth, we've called this the butterfly effect. The metaphorical example is of a butterfly flapping its wings and starting a chain of events that lead to a hurricane on the other side of the planet. Again, it is complicated. Suffice it to say that at this moment in time, our governments have all agreed that our options are limited. This might be our best chance to stop or delay the Iconians, but temporal investigations will intervene if we feel that the cure is more dangerous than the disease. Hello. Under ordinary circumstances, perhaps. It's only because the Iconian situation is so desperate that we're allowing this research to continue. You've been on the front lines of the war. I'm sure you realize how few options we have left. Hello. Captain, you're alive. We repelled the intruders on the bridge, but the ship has taken heavy damage, and a lot of the crew are injured. Sir, I'm not sure this is the time. So many people are hurt, and most of the systems are offline. The life support is on backups, and our resources are down to nothing, and... The Dominion stopped firing at us when we lost weapons. Now they're focusing on Earth's defense grid, but it's only a matter of time before they return to finish us off. Sir, I, I tried to fight them off. The supporting parties, the Gem and R. We have to stop the Dominion. They can't take Earth, too. We... we can't stop them. Maybe if we hadn't been at war with the Romulans. Maybe if the Klingons hadn't ripped themselves apart. I'll... I'll be fine, Captain. Just rattle them. I never expected they would get so far into our defenses. I'm sorry, Captain. I just need a moment. Then I'll be ready to fight. Incoming hail! USS Ajax, sensors show your ship is completely defenseless. And I would prefer not to delay our arrival at Earth to deal with such a minor annoyance. Surrender now, and I will guarantee the safety of your crew. Sorry, we were watching from the control room, and that could have gone better. Even with all that, the simulation data on whether the Iconians were entirely eliminated from that timeline is inconclusive. We were able to record your interactions, and we've been able to piece together what happened from those. From what we can piece together, the Klingon Empire was never unified by its conflicts against outsiders, and the Great Houses turned on one another instead. The Romulans took the chaos as an opportunity to attack. The Federation stepped in to help the Klingons, and the war between the three factions basically ripped the Quadrant apart. The Dominion then conquered all three weakened powers. Agreed. My team will continue working on other possible incursion scenarios. A 
another one of you voyagers. I don't know how you can help, but very well. My team is working on scenarios that reduce the Iconian power base. We're attempting to do so by fixing a mistake that Janeway allowed to happen decades ago. We're going to stop the Vatwar from being rediscovered. We plan to do this by preventing Voyager from ever coming into contact with Underspace. This will prevent them from finding Vatwar Prime. And Seven of Nine will never wake the Vatwar. None of us are going to survive if we don't try to repair the damage you've already done. The goal is to cause a solar flare that will force Voyager to divert from the course it was on when it stumbled into underspace. If it safely passes without entering underspace, it can continue on its trip home and bypass the Vatwar entirely. The simulation is set for the USS Voyager, which is fitting since they caused the problem in the first place. Our projections show that even if the Vodwar never return, your people will still find a reason to stick your noses into our business. So we're attempting to see how the elimination of the Vodwar will change the formation of the Delta Alliance. You will be a member of the diplomatic team. Don't mind, Norman. I think he partially blames people from your quadrant for some of the Krenin's troubles. After all, if Voyager hadn't restored the Vodwar, they would have never been in a position to ally with the Iconians. But there is no reason to dwell on past hurts. We're trying to fix what we can here, and then learn to accept the rest. Noi funnels that passion to help his people into his work. Perhaps it will change everything. It is a pleasure to meet you. Both Captain Nog and Seven speak highly of you. My name is Clauda, and I am a Tutarian. We're from a region of the Delta Quadrant Voyager never visited, so we haven't had much contact with species from the Alpha and Beta Quadrants until now. However, my world has had close ties with the Krenim for several years. Now that they are actively pursuing temporal technology, I chose to join them and lend whatever assistance I can. I miss my home, but I've made a new one here. Meeting Noi has opened me up to a world beyond my own. It is a pleasure to meet you. Both Captain Nog and I was on Kiana Prime with Noi when we received word of the Vodwar attacks. We had only hours to get the temporal equipment running and remove the population from the time stream. Since then, the focus of my work has been developing more stable data storage. We can see into other timelines, but we need a way to secure the data through temporal shifts so we can preserve information about incursions and their effects. In the case of a catastrophic shift, that data could be used as a map to restore the timeline. It is a pleasure to meet you. Don't mind, Noi. I think you... It is a pleasure... This is an absolute disaster. I had thought that Admiral Tuvok was being pessimistic about the chance for success here. But now, I think he was right. No, it's not. The hierarchy started setting these people against one another before Admiral Tuvok and his team could start to pull them together. The very fact that they all agreed to be in the same room is a minor miracle. Eventually, between Vulcan logic, Klingon tenacity, and Romulan pragmatism, we'll convince everyone here that the threat is real, and an alliance is in their best interest. But it won't be easy. Ugh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I see I have another argument to break up. We've always tried to be good neighbors and treat other races with respect, but this is really too much. The Malon are using our system as a dump, and their trash isn't our problem. I should be shouting, I'm upset! The Malon are trying to force us off our beautiful new planet so they can turn it into something toxic. How would you like it if someone treated your ship like a garbage scow? We've always tried to be good neighbors and treat other races with re- The Malon claim the hierarchy are harassing them, but they're targeting our ships too. 
So I don't know what to believe. But there are rumors. Traitor talk. You know how it is. But I've heard it a lot lately. They say the hierarchy are capturing people and selling them to another race for experiments or as food. We've always tried to be good neighbors, and the Melon might not be the biggest threat, but they are the most immediate. Wait until they start dumping their trash in your front yard, and see how you like it. Are you here to preach about responsible waste management, too? You can save it. I have a commitment to my people and my planet that supersedes any other concerns. How dare you dictate how we should behave? The disposal of hazardous waste is a noble sacrifice my people make on behalf of their families. Who are you to cheapen their sacrifice? What we do is none of your business. Are you here to preach about responsible waste management too? Ah, I don't want to talk about the hierarchy. They're nothing but trouble. That's part of the reason we're looking for new dumping grounds. I've lost too many ships in the past year. Half a generation of valuable and desperately needed haulers. They're just gone. And I know the hierarchy is to blame. Are you here to... We don't need outsiders telling us what to do. If the Talaxians want to talk, they can come to us directly. Yes, what is your question? I am rather busy. The Hazari are stepping up their smuggling operations, and the Hierarchy's new drive for profits has created a significant increase in attacks on unaligned transports. We have enough to do at the moment without getting into a dispute that doesn't concern us. The Hierarchy is harassing our supply lines, and I'm convinced they're behind the losses we've taken over the past three months. We're having to double up patrols, which means we're leaving holes the Hazari can slip through. The Malon are a headache we don't need. Yes, what is your question? The hierarchy's surveillance measures are the best in the Quadrant. And that's left us more exposed than I would like. We're losing ships. Once or twice we found debris with hierarchy weapon signatures. They're cautious. It's like they can smell traps. Yes, what is your... Good luck with that. The Hazari aren't interested in anything but making deals. This whole meeting is just a waste of time. Unity might work where you come from, but I don't have any reason to cooperate with criminals like the Hazari or thugs like the Hierarchy. What do you want? Did the Benthans make you one of their little deputies? Or was it the Malon? Before everyone broke ties with the Hierarchy, they told us what people say about us. Mercenaries. Anonymous. Ha! They all deny it. But we know. Now we look out for ourselves. No. We need to make a living, same as the rest of you. If the Benthans would take out the hierarchy on our borders, we wouldn't be forced to move into Benthan space. But no. They won't do that. They don't think mercenaries rate protection. What do you want? Troublemakers. They make our jobs harder and easier. They watch everyone. We used to trade for information from them, but now they won't sell. If we can capture one of their ships, it's like a treasure hoard of information. Makes hunting bounties real easy. But it's harder to take out their ships. I hear they're getting upgrades. And it's not just their ships. Stories going around about one captain whose arm was ripped off by a hierarchy commander. Used to be they'd run from fights. Now they start them. What do you want? Fine, run back to the Benthans. I'll be here if you want to talk business. <sighs> Unraveling this mess could take months, years.
was useless. The Iconians were so determined to have a hold here that they simply found another species to fit the bill. Maybe if you had been a better negotiator, you would have been able to unite those representatives against the hierarchy. Then at least we would have had a chance. This scenario isn't as catastrophic as trying to remove the Iconians, but it's not exactly ideal either. We'll have to try something else. You must excuse my husband's harsh demeanor. This has been a very trying time for the Krenim. Thank you for helping us get this far. We'll keep working. Trust my wife to be the voice of reason. Perhaps I was too hard on you. I... I just want to be able to fix all of this. We can't turn back time, but we can change it. Please, speak to Gamma Team. Captain Nog thinks very highly of their plan. Hello. We've been waiting for you. Our team is focusing on delaying tactics. What if Iconia had never been discovered? In 2365, Captain Donald Varley of the USS Yamato found a star chart on Denias III that revealed the location of Iconia. I want to redirect a meteor to impact the archaeological site on Denias III before Captain Varley begins his excavations. Iconia will remain a myth, and we will not attract the Iconians' attention as early as we did. True, but if you compare the changes in Iconian technology over the past 200,000 years with what the rest of us have done in the past two centuries, it's obvious that the Iconian culture has stagnated while we have advanced rapidly. Additionally, there are other factors in play that could trigger the alliances and sharing of technology that have come about because of the Iconian threat. It's a risk, but it's one that could pay off. The program is set for Romulan space. Because the Hobus supernova was caused by direct Iconian interference, we expect Romulus to be intact in this new reality. As such, the Romulan Star Empire should once again be a major power in the Quadrant. Your role will be as an officer on a Romulan warbird. Yes, to call it a huge change would be an understatement. Please be aware that nothing will be done unless the Republic agrees this is the best possible solution. There is already a team here working on the possible restoration of Romulus, and Commander Jirak has been authorized to speak for the Republic if needed. The fact that our data shows delaying the Iconian arrival will also save Romulus is an interesting coincidence, but it does not mean we will accept the solution without looking at other options. The program is set for Rod... Commander, I'd like to test out some new security passcodes. If you'd be so kind as to seal the doors and disable certain uh, equipment, we need to talk.
secret conversations between the commander and one of his senior officers. Very suspicious. Loyal citizens of the Romulan Star Empire have no need for locked doors. Tamer, you are a fool, and you will be the death of everyone on this ship. Datan and his people are terrorists. If you join them, you will share their Friends, it is time we forge our own destiny. A destiny free from the tyranny of the Tal Shiar. If we leave, we will have a better, brighter future than what they would allow us. I know this is a step into the unknown, but it is a step we will take together. Throw off your chains. We will join our brothers and sisters in freedom. That is the most promising simulation yet. It appears there was some merit to our hypothesis that the Arconians advanced their plans due to early contact. The readings do indicate higher levels of Borg activity, but it should be an acceptable risk. The data in this simulation does show higher Borg activity than we're currently seeing, but there are no signs of Herald, Iconian, or Solonate presence at all. And while the Romulan Star Empire is restored to their former power, there is a democratic Romulan group opposing the Tal Shiar. And more importantly, Romulus is intact. This is the result many of our Romulan researchers have been trying to bring about. The political calculus of the Quadrant will change, but the data supports what you saw on the holodeck. No Iconians. We have solid projections. The only suggestion I have now is that you consider it in conjunction with Captain Nog and the Republic representatives here. This last test has the most promising results I've seen, and saving the Romulan homeworld is an added bonus. We're not going to have a lot of shots at this. I've been looking at Anorex's work, and I think it's too easy to get into a temporal loop where you try again and again for a specific result, and time starts fighting back. I'm inclined to say this is our best chance. But this will have a huge impact on the reality we know, especially your people, Commander Jirak. I won't give my authorization without hearing from everyone. This is difficult. It would change everything for us. We'd have our home back, but the Republic, everything we've built, it would all be gone. But there's still hope. Even in this other reality, Datan has led many Romulans away from Sela and her tall Shi'ar thugs. The simulation specifically mentioned Datan and a separatist movement. Commander Tamer makes the choice to join Datan, the same choice he made after the homeworld was lost. With Romulus, we could have numbers. More people who have had enough of the Tal Shiar's oppression could join us. Maybe millions more. 
If Datan is able to get a movement going, even at the height of the Empire's power, I have to believe that change is possible. Make the incursion. The lives we save will be worth the work we'll have to do to reform the Republic. The Talshiar wasn't able to stop us the first time. They won't stop us again. activity, but this can't be right. I agree that this is unexpected, Commander, but we knew there would be anomalies. <laughs> we need more information. Let's find out where the simulation might have gone wrong. The whole system can't be assimilated, can it? That is a lot of Borg. According to these scans, the planet has been completely assimilated. I'm not detecting any non-Borg life signs. This is bad. Really, really bad. We need to fix this. Borg ships decloaking. Red alert. First the Klingons, now the Borg. Does everyone still focus on the I'm going to join you. I know this place, or at least I knew this place. Before we lost the homeworld, it was a tall Shar complex. Most of the secrets of our empire were stored here. I thought I was getting my home back, but now the Borg have taken it all away. This is like losing Romulus all over again. The controls ahead of us will unlock the bulkheads. planet. All our people, they're Borg.
I can't believe we were so wrong. have to find a way to make this right. technology once, but it's been completely assimilated. Looks like the main invasion of Romulan space occurred about 20 years ago. Something happened in the Delta Quadrant. The Borg assimilated something that greatly improved their technology. And they adapted, evolved, and my people, they didn't have a chance. Maybe it's our fate to lose Romulus. on an intercept course. More Borg on the way. 
York to cloaking. Your channel confirmed. are gone, but so is Romulus. Romulus isn't the only thing we lost. Temporal shielding is failing. What happened? The Borg did too much damage to the generators. If we lose the temporal shielding, we'll all reintegrate with the timeline. Has anything else changed? Checking. No. The Tutarians. They're gone. What? How? I see the problem. Twenty years ago, your people tried to replicate the work of the Solene to protect themselves from the Borg. In this timeline, they failed. Temporal shield is at 8%. No, I need to restabilize the shields. I'm downloading my personal files into the shielded core. You'll have all my research notes and everything we've recorded from this mission. You're giving up? When the shield fails, Terrians were lost in the past, then you'll be lost too. Temporal shield is losing integrity. Is there anything we can do? No, we all knew the risks. I love you. We found a temporally shielded computer core, and it shows two uses of the Krenum weapon. But as far as I know, the Iconians are still out there. We changed the timeline, but we didn't fix our most important problem. We won't be sure until we finish analyzing the data, but the Krenum weapon was used twice. I remember being on the bridge of the Krenum ship and seeing a readout with a far lower power reserve than had just been there a moment before. I'm sure you had a similar situation. As to the greater differences, we'll know more soon. I only hope the ripples from what we did today don't start a tsunami. We found a temporally shielded computer core, and it shows two uses of the Krenum. We haven't dug that far into the data yet, and it will take some in-depth investigation to catalog all of the changes. Noi is going to lead the group taking care of that. I will say it is uh, 
odd to find personal logs I don't remember making. Very. But from what we've already seen, it appears the reason the weapon was fired twice was because we had to try to correct a change we made. Technology like this seems so simple, but even the smallest change can make more trouble than it solves. We have to be more cautious. Far more cautious than we've already been, I suppose. The next mistake might not be fixable. Time alteration might not be the answer. There are some problems that can't be solved with a weapon. But time travel... <sighs> Look, whatever happens, it was good working with you. I hope we have the chance to do so in the future. We put so much hope into using the Krenum technology to solve our problems. Perhaps I was caught up in the possibilities and blind to the potential for disaster. We tried and we failed. But this isn't the end. We'll keep looking at the simulations as well as any other option open to us. I have to have faith that we will find a way to defeat the Iconians. I was conducting another simulation, and all of a sudden I got an emergency call telling me to stop everything. I will be looking at whatever data we managed to save to try and determine what went wrong. Maybe we can try again after we know more. It has been good to have you here, but we will have to consider if time alteration is really the best course of action. Of all the records we have of time travel, few have as drastic a result as this. Perhaps removing elements from the time stream isn't the solution we need. I have a lot of information to analyze. The shielded core appears to have made it through the process intact, and will give us a wealth of data on the timeline and how the changes have affected it. Clearly, you made a mistake somewhere. I still feel this is the best technology available to us, but we will need minds sufficient to the task to operate it. Captain Nog tells me that the initial test of the Krinim weapon was less than promising. He says that he and his team have a great deal of data still to analyze. But I do not believe they will find much that will assist us. Removing elements from the time stream is reckless. And while our options are limited, we should not destroy ourselves in a fruitless effort to destroy the Iconians. It is time to consider all of our alternatives. Thank you. 